Hello everybody, you're listening to the Arch on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host Dan Cobain. This is the weekly radio show where we chat about the local arts news. We have a different guest on each week. We head over to the Rye Light Zone for a short story and or some poetry. We play local unsigned and or independent music. And we catch up with Twanglin' Jack Ford over in the York Shed for a weekly album review. Uh, as always, you can reach out to me here at the studio by dropping me an email on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk. That's D-A-N-E dot C-O-B-A-I-N at wickhamsound.org.uk. I'm particularly keen to hear from poets, performers, musicians, people with MP3s, with arts news to share, potential guests. Don't hesitate to get in touch. You can also find us on Facebook. If you search for The Art Show on Wickham Sound, you should be able to find us. And we are repeated on Wickham Sound on Monday nights or on the Wickham Sound Listen Again, iTunes, Spotify, and wherever else you get your podcasts. Please do leave us a little review on your podcast platform of choice. So uh, this week we are going to be chatting to Grammy Award winning uh, musician Amrit Sond. Uh, but before we do that, we are going to head over to the Rylight Zone to catch up with Twanglin' Jack Ford for part number seven in his installment, uh, or installment number seven in his series, My Musical Journey. I was quite grown up and responsible for a few years. But then one day my wife made the mistake of inviting my friend Phil to a party we were throwing. Someone Phil knew had asked him to look after and make use of an 8-track recording setup. I said I would only get involved if we wrote a musical. As always, we were persuaded to do favours for favours. We recorded a version of a Jerry and the Pacemakers song for a voiceover artist Phil knew, who thought he could get us into an advertising agency working on ads for Larder cars. It went, I like it, a Larder which worked quite well, apart from the fact that Larda then changed their name. Phil was friends with a soul singer who had been slightly well known a few years earlier. She suggested we record my song The Same Sun Shines on Everyone. She thought my song was a perfect counter to Coca-Cola's song I'd like to teach the world to sing. Not for the first or last time large sums of money were mentioned. Her husband was a professional singer and he sang lead. in my hands All the things that money could bring fell through my fingers like grains of sand I walked through the park with my girl I remember the sun how it shined Oh, it was such a perfect world But now it's all left behind and it's the same sun that shines on everyone yeah. Everybody in the world wants to be happy and free yeah. It's the same sun that lights up all our skies It's the same sun the shine on you and me, yeah. It's the same sun, yeah. Can you feel it? Down in your soul. Are you listening to this song? We also recorded an informative song to be played on the airport buses. It was written by a friend who had once been a professional musician but had taken a job managing the Heathrow car parks. Fuck and fly Where the one you can depend on When you go away We're travelling on business Or a restful holiday You'll have peace of mind you just park and fly You'll be sure your car's secure With park and fly Back when it was just about possible to make decent samples on a PC, we got a job making sounds for a fruit machine. 
a job that actually paid us money. Phil was asked to write a play to celebrate the anniversary of Cypriot independence. This was performed at Theatro Technis in Camden. We provided some incidental music. <laughs> and recorded a musical we called Storm City. A young man returns from exile to bring down a corrupt local official that had banished him and win back the hand of the woman he loved. Tell it to the judge who sent me a woman I'm back in town in a dirty state Gave me the choice of ten years and so To get out of town to serve his height Cast out into the outside world alone And you better watch out Stark City I'm coming home I'm coming home Girl, I, I hope she's waiting for me. I hope she's waiting for me. By then, I was working all hours as a minicab driver and I carried a small keyboard to write songs. I clearly remember being parked up and coming up with a song I was so pleased with that I told the controller I was taking a break and drove to Phil's to play it to him. I have a dream of a perfect world Where the total of the numbers going down Match the total of those that go across I believe in a wonderful world Where the answer to all problems can be found In the columns of the profit and loss I believe that if everything was equal it would benefit the whole human race You could shuffle the figures and cook the books And the world would be a much better place These are the joys of accountancy It's all there for you to see All in black and white And the figures all agree it's the joys of accountancy It's seeing with clarity What the ordinary man Considers a mystery Our contact at the Theatro Technis moved to the Theatre Royal Stratford East and he got us the opportunity to have Storm City workshopped by a professional cast. The only problem was that we wrote like rock musicians with words and chords. The professionals needed a melody line and did not want to be told what the chords were for some reason. But we got it done and Phil attended the workshop. But I could not afford not to work. Meanwhile, we were working on another major project. It had started when Theatro Technis put on a play Phil had written and he offered to do a one-man show as a support act. We worked on a few parody songs which became part of a rather sad monologue, spoken by a broken man looking back on a life he had largely imagined. We then turned this into a more upbeat comedy mock radio interview recording, with fully formed songs in styles that charted the progress of rock music from the 50s to the 90s. Uh, we're, we're running a bit short on time here, Mike, and I noticed that uh, you brought a guitar with you. Um, obviously, you didn't realise it was a chat show, but I suppose since you've got it, you might as well give us a number. So uh, we'll come back to you after this. Yeah, well, thank you. Um... 
Over and over and over and over I love you once it became feasible to film and edit on home equipment, we made a whole mock documentary with talking head interviews. I'm standing outside this shop because this is a story about a man that once worked here and started out his career here, of Mike Desandre. <laughs> There were flowers in your eyes There were ribbons in your smile Butterflies were dancing in your hair Walking in the gardens of your mind Is <laughs> Um, all, all, the, all the lads, I mean, Brian Jones, lovely, lovely, lovely man. I mean, a lot of that stuff, rubbish. I got him a hill with a gore and lovely little runner. It's funny thinking about that car now, because the last time I saw him, because I, I went up the house and he went there. I left, I left the car on the drive and uh, just a little note to him, Brian, your brakes are done. And, uh, oh, you've got a loose tar by a swimming pool including our friend John Bird, the Big Issue founder, now Lord John Bird. We just sat and we talked for hours about how this was going to be done and it was really exciting because he was going to, he was not only going to do the, um, uh, you know, the, a disc, yeah. which we're going to stick on the front of the paper, on the front of the Big Issue, um, he was also going to do this video because he knew this bloke who, who did all these films and all that. And he'd sketched it all out and he'd really done a hell of a lot of work. Very, very impressive person in a very strange sort of way. The premise to the mock documentary was that our central character was there at all the changes in rock music. But he was never at the forefront. He may have been a leader or a follower, but he never got any credit. We had invented a character we recognised and we thought it was people we knew but it was probably actually us. Of the songs I wrote for the project, my favourite was my 80s song, a Springsteen parody playing on the jogging craze of the time. I stole a riff from Puccini. I adapted one of the main motifs from Puccini's La Boheme. Still you're going for the burn You're racing in the street My trainers on your feet You're giving your heart and soul It's great if you try Look the tiger in the eye And then shoot for your Eventually we got the bad news from the Theatre Royal Stratford East. Storm City was a satire on early 90s politics set in the near future. The advice we were finally given was to try to write something period. Something a bit more like Les Miserables. So we did. But that's another story. Sing with me children! It's the same sun. Don't you know it is? It's the same sun. Can you feel it? Yes, it's the same sun Down in your oh, soul yes, It's the same sun Big thank you to Twangling Jack Ford for this week's entry into the Rye Light Zone. You're listening to the Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and this is Simon Gregory with Call of Duty.
went to school, but I worked my father's land. I'd never been ten miles from our home. But after fifteen summers, I could ride and I could shoot, and I ventured to the county fair alone. The sergeant in the army tent had shillings on his drum. And his stories and the ale called to me And before I knew it I'd received my shilling and a gun Off to fight the French for my king and country And it wasn't just the foe who saw us coming As we marched in line with rifles in our hands Slaughtered boys who looked like us but spoke another tongue To decide which rich man got to rule the land Rule the land Two centuries on, it's still the same Everything's different but nothing's changed I wasn't good at school And I couldn't find a job That required all the skills I learned at home A life of watching movies Playing Xbox, flying drones Doesn't fit you for a standard office club but I'd seen all the recruitment advertising Let us make you into all that you can be And before I knew it, I'd received a bus cut and a gun And the rest is military history To last a lifetime They never said how long that life would be and Those of us who made it back Were not the boys who left our homes To answer to the call of our duty The promise we come back covered in glory We'd be heroes and our country would be proud as work for men who've seen too much and can't forget the things they've done and blood spill on that foreign ground and it wasn't just the foe who saw us coming as we stood there with our papers in our hands it wasn't in the desert or the field or in the trench but on the home from where we took our final stand It wasn't just the foe who saw us coming As we stood there with our papers in our hands It wasn't in the desert or the field or in the trench But on the home from where we took our final stand Who rules the land? Who makes the choice? Who makes the profit? Who pays the price?
You're listening to the Arch on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and it's time for us to be joined by this week's guest, who is Grammy Award winning musician Amrit Sond. So the first question may or may not be relevant to you, but it's a bit of a tradition I ask everybody, which is uh, what was the last book that you read and what did you think of it? Oh, God, the last book I read was A Map of the World. Uh, it was a few oh, wow. years. Yeah, it's a very detailed, very. Um, but I like the how intricate it was, you know, how the time it took to clearly define a character, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it's been quite inspiring to actually, um, in terms of emotional um, uh, definition and stuff like that. So uh, I kind of use that with my, you know, there's a new thing I'm doing with my guitar, which is I'm focusing a lot on phrasing. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, you know, constantly learning new new things on the guitar self. So because of the book, because of the intricate way that it was, you know, every character is defined and they go into the depth um and the dynamics, it it kind of brings out their colors, for lack of a better word. So yeah. yes, kind of, you know, um that was probably but it was a while back, man. It was and basically <laughs> one of the reasons I read it because one of my favorite guitar players, Pat Matheny, he done the film track to it. Oh, yeah. cool! And my mom always liked like the theme song for it, so I actually learned it note for note. I can't play it now, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So I always carry that with me all the time. Not with me, with me, but it's within me. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. And and speaking of characters, so uh, with your own music, you know, your music is is instrumental. Um, how do you give your your sort of your compositions their own character without uh, without using words? Like, how do you uh, approach that using just just the guitar and you know the sound effects you make? Oh, hey, yeah. Um, you know, things have changed now where I'm doing a lot of vocalization stuff, overtone, African uh, percussion stuff and all. But generally, I'll start up. It's all composition based, you know, so I'll, uh, most of my instrumental stuff is actually related to emotions and my memories at that specific time. I don't write an awful lot. You know, it takes me a long time to finish a piece. Seriously, then it takes me an awfully <laughs> long, embarrassing time to finish a piece. But it's what I expect from it. So it visually starts within my head where I have certain uh, places I would like to go with it. Uh, and then uh, I always start with the title. I always start with the title of the song and that inspire me. That's kind of like my scaffolding, you know, just just mm. have the title. Ready. Um, and then I'll just let that inspire me. I can t- it, it can take a few months to, you know. Uh, start something happening but once I've got something solid in place you know and I always say you know the sparks are gone then and then the real work starts the real work mm. you know thing and creating it you know shaping it to the way that um you know it's what in your head but ultimately you still can't hear it um but it's important to me not to uh steal for myself you know so yeah. it's very important that whatever I am creating has to be quite unique to what I've done before you know, I, I can't have two pieces that vaguely sound the same. It's just not me, you know, yeah. um, and I bore myself very easily. So um, once I've got something really firmly in place and then it's just a question of, um, you know, going places with it. To me, composition is taking a listener somewhere that's unpredictable. Yeah. You know, yeah, I quite like that. You know, it's just yeah. kind of, you know, kind of silencing the mind. Uh, so there's no, you know, if there's any predictability happening over there, there would need there would need to be a reason for that predictable uh, passage to come through. And and if I am repeating something, I need to be aware that the piece itself has gone through a process. So if I am repeating something, whatever the repeat is, it needs to show a growth from what's previously happened. So it's not it's generally not an exact repeat. So there yeah. needs to be. Yeah. But that takes a long time. It does take a long, long time to, you know, get to a place that I'm firmly happy with. I mean, uh, one of my pieces, Rigid Geometry, that took like seven years to write, man. Wow. <laughs> no, yeah. But it was very difficult for me. And also when I'm writing something new, I'm, I challenge myself a lot because I'm not a guitar player, man. I can't play guitar. I, can't, I, I generally don't know scales. I don't know anything about the guitar. All I do is I sit down, tunings are my thing. I'll create a tuning. I'll just write within it. And I have to push myself to that my fingers are going places where they haven't before or I'm doing stuff mm. that I haven't quite explored before, you know. So that's my learning process. So I can kind of have an idea floating around for about four months at least before I can even play it. And then by that time, I'll start to get things under my fingers and then that'll lead me somewhere else. And then again, it's, you know, just pushing myself. Yeah. 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 And, you know, you, you talked about that, like, need to avoid predictability. Like, is that something you do with your songs? Do you leave yourself scope within them so that you can improvise a bit live or, you know, uh, you know, are two, any two live performances, are they kind of markedly different or are you pretty much playing the same thing each time? It depends how well I know the piece. 
um, I can't improvise if I don't know the piece too well. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I mean, seriously, man, I can have the piece hanging around for about four years before I'm even going to risk kind of deconstructing it on stage. Yeah. I would say um, I don't change sections as such, but I do change the feel and I change the dynamics. Uh, mm. Occasionally, um, you know, I'll change certain um, phrasings just because, you know, I'm thinking, oh, you know what, I, I made a mistake there where I shouldn't have played that phrase in that yeah. particular way, but it happened. But now I remember the way I was supposed to play that phrase. You know, when I go on stage, as now with now with the vocal stuff, there's even more happening within my head, you know, mm -hmm. so there's no scope for things to go wrong. So I wouldn't say, uh, I would need to know it, I, I would need to know the, my piece very well to be very, very comfortable with it for me to kind of take it to places. But some of my older stuff, which I've, which has been hanging around for, you know, over 10 years, them ones I rip apart. I literally yeah. rip them apart and I kind of dissect them, you know, dissect them. And if I'm running out of time and now the vocals have come in now, so the vocals can take like three, four minutes longer, uh, to make the piece longer so i'll just chop sections as it's going along you know i'll just you know what i already played that section i'll just kind of go straight to the vocal part now yeah but yeah. um the important thing is not to feel guilty about it you know yeah because we, we we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to um get your performance and the song right now for me it's important to deliver it in a in a manner that was suitable for the night not just what i planned so you know things have changed quite a bit now i'm very much i'm i'm less harder on myself yeah you know yeah otherwise you know we we just tear ourselves up and we get depressed about it but yeah <laughs> yeah cool awesome and how would you like describe your musical style is that like a genre you would say it fits under or like if 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 you met somebody on the street and they asked you to describe what your music's like how would you how would you describe it to them oh god you know i just say contemporary acoustic yeah that <laughs> you know that's but i generally say to them if, if they're that curious then they can come to a gig or i can play for yeah. them you give a much better idea. I did try to explain it once what I did, uh, what I do do on the guitar, but man, it just came out like I was doing karaoke or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Like like one man band show. So I'm like, you know, I just leave it to the imagination. Also, it's kind of nice that if you don't describe it too much, there's less expectations mm. uh, for you, you know, and they can kind of make their own mind up, which is important to me as well, especially with the overtone singing. They, a lot of people don't know about it and some of the African stuff I'm doing now. Uh, so it's kind of nice that they just perceive it in their own sense, you know, yeah. um, what their mind is, you know, what they kind of make of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, there's no expectations with me, you know, even if they don't, you know, they don't like it. It's it's just what I do. Yeah, I've kind yeah. of gone past the point of, um, you know, I wouldn't say caring, but taking note that someone didn't like it, you know, yeah. it's important to push myself. Yeah. I'd, first foremost, I do it for myself. Yeah. Yeah. That's very and, and And I think it's, there's some, some truth in that saying, if you try and pr uh, please everyone, you please no one, you know? So, um, you know, it's kind of not the goal of your music to please everybody, but what it does do is I think is like um, maybe challenges people and maybe makes people think as well. It's, 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 you know, it's different to what they might be used to seeing if they've only ever been to, you know, just like a an acoustic open mic night, uh, you know, a typical pub or whatever. It's just a lot of people playing Oasis covers or whatever it is. So, um, I, I, you know, I think it you can you can bring something new to the table because of that. Yeah, you know, I've got the advantage. I've never actually learned how to play guitar. Do, yeah. <laughs> seriously, dude, I've I've only just learned to C chord a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I never play in standard tuning, so I've got that advantage where I can't yeah. really. Uh, I have attempted covers, but they're just awfully. I can't memorize them, man. I, yeah. And, you know, it's very hard for me to uh, deliver a song when the the artists themselves have written it with certain emotions in mind that mm. I'm not a of. You know, so it's important to me to deliver something on an emotional level, you know. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, it just becomes a mechanical thing, you know. But it's good to challenge audiences, you know. Yeah, there's, I mean, and if I was to do singer-songwriting stuff, man, like, you know, like there's you and there's loads of other guys that are phenomenal mm. at it. You can't even meet that mark. You know, I'm not even a singer. I just do vocal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And so you've won a, a Grammy Award, right? Can you tell us a little bit about that and how, how that came about? Oh, yeah, that was in uh, 2005, if I remember yeah. correctly. Um, my record label's in the States. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're in the States. It's, it's not a huge record label, Dane. It's just a small record label because our music doesn't kind of equate to those big marketing guys but they were you know they, they were tied in with certain big corporate companies at the time um and uh, they were tied in with warner brothers and warner brothers owns the rights to henry mancini's music and 
the label had James Jansen, he said to me, you know, we're going to be doing an album of uh, Henry Mancini uh, stuff, you know, and he'd like for me to participate in that. So, you know, I literally got handed a tune, which was great because mm. he knows very well. He knows uh, my sensitive nature. So he gave me a tune and I worked really hard at it. I had like about 16 different versions of it before he got uh, accepted. You know, it was very micromanaged for a reason because the standard was very high. Um, so yeah, um, the next, so we put the album out, it done quite well. And then the next thing we hear is going to get put through, you know, for a Grammy. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. You know, um, but we got nominated. Yeah. I'm like, okay, you know, that'll do it just fine. And you know, it's, that's beyond our wildest imaginations anyways. Mm. You know? And, um, then, um, you know, we, uh, yeah, I got a phone call four o'clock in the morning on the night of the Grammys that, uh, hey man, we won. And, nice. uh, yeah, it was a big deal. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a personal accolade for me because I never in my life thought that would ever happen. I don't really push, um, I don't really promote it well. It, mm. You know, I, I still do what I do. It hasn't changed me and it hasn't changed any of our lives. You know, I'm still the same. Yeah. It yeah. made a bunch of things for us way back then. Um, and it still generates a little bit of income here and there, which is fine. But, you know, it's uh, just something that uh, gave me confidence in myself. And I'll always say this, you know, promoters at that time uh, treat you as a local talent, you know, mm. and I don't like that. You know, I, I don't like my music, other artists' music. It's not local talent stuff. Yeah, me, we, me, you know, we may live in the vicinity, but we're not, you know, it's just local talent, local talent. And the one good thing it done, it took that local talent badge away from me. Yeah. And it gave it the international uh, status or image that it needed, you know, and yeah. finally producers and audiences could take me far more seriously. And, uh, you know, that it was very beneficial in that sense. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but dude, there's still no... Um, yeah, you know, that cat like the chicks and a trunk full of money still hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain. I'm here in conversation with Amrit Son. And this is one of Amrit's tunes. Uh, this one is unreleased and he has no plans to release it. He gave it to us as an exclusive. So that's very exciting.
That was some music by Amrit Son. You're listening to the Archer on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and it's time for us to be rejoined in conversation by Amrit Son. Um, but I wondered, what are some of the venues um, that you like to play in the most, and uh, why? Uh, yeah, you know, my my home, my musical home is Windsor. You know, it's mm-hmm. the Windsor Art Centre, the Windsor Fire Code. Uh, it's called the Old Code now, the, the, the fire station. Yeah, it's actually called the Old Code. Now, you know, that's where I started my musical... Uh, performances uh, because of Grand Steel. He was one of the, um, uh, he was basically the manager over there. And, and I'd just done an open mic night about 20, 30, 25 years ago. And, mm-hmm. you know, it obviously didn't work in the bar area. And he came up to me and he said, you know, we need to put you in theaters uh, because that's just what the music kind of demands of it. You know, yeah. uh, I could play theaters that then, you know, I, I couldn't play those quiet places. So I really had to work hard at it. Um, but uh, Windsor is one of those places. Uh, High Wycombe has always been very, very cool. You know, when you know um, for the for the um, nights that you guys used to put on. Um, mm-hmm. and there's a couple of lovely, lo- lovely, lovely venues up north. There, there's a contra route. Uh, but but once again, Dane, the venue is a direct product of what the promoter believes in. Mm-hmm. You know, they actually create a standard you know so if they believe in the type of stuff i'm doing if they believe in grassroots if they believe in world music if they believe you know they will create an environment where that form of art can come alive you know yeah yeah for sure and yeah uh but most importantly i mean i do play new venues but it's important to me that there's a good sound you know yeah. there's a good sound and i still remember my very first experience which is at, at the windsor art center when they put me in the auditorium um I'd never. The only thing that saved 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 me at that time was a sound that was coming back at me because I'd never heard my guitar sound so okay, you know. Uh, and then I knew instantly, you know, I need sound on myself, and I can kind of immerse into the sound, and I can start to uh, deliver a performance that you know is going to kind of get out of my guitar and kind of speak something, as opposed to just having a dry flat, you know, which the sound doesn't even leave my guitar, let let alone hit an audience. You know, so sound is important. Yeah. Um, also, you know, completely listening places. I kind of I, I live for that stuff, man. Um, so what have you got planned next and where can people, you know, follow you to find out more online and all of that stuff? Yeah. Firstly, the online thing, you know, I came off all social aspects, uh, social platforms a while back, about four years ago. And I've got no intention. It's just not me. You know, <laughs> all social thing, social media. It just, it isn't me and I can't deal with it, Dane. You know, my, <laughs> my headspace just gets really fried with it all. And um, I honestly haven't got time for it either. And I just don't know what to do with it. You know, yeah, I'll put a, you know, I'll tell folks I'm playing here, but, you know, yeah. maybe, um, you know, what are the chances of, you know, an influx of folks coming, you know? Um, yeah. But what we have got, we have got a website coming up. Um, it's just that I don't want to release the website now. We've got about, 70% of it done already, but I'm just keeping it under wraps. Um, it'll be amritson.net. Um, now, um, I've got a brand new CD coming out towards the end of the year. I've finally, finally, finally written everything. Uh, it's rock solid. I'm just playing around, you know, all the pieces are firmly in place now, but I'm just playing them to kind of maybe, you know, holding up for a little bit more magic that might come alive mm-hmm. um, just for playing them. So I've given myself three months of just playing them and I play them every day. Uh, it's taken me... Uh, like 16 years to write this guitar suite, which is now completely finished. You know, it's been like a dream come true. And I'm really yeah. happy. With it. uh, it's been a lot of work because I've really pushed myself with it as well. Um, so that is coming. Uh, so there will be a new CD. Uh, about 60% of it's already recorded, mixed mastered already. And uh, it's just a question of getting the recording the guitar suite down. I'm planning on doing that in November. Um, cool. which I've done here in my home space. You know, we're just going to get it made. He's going to come around, set all the microphones up, uh, just do all the dry recordings here, then take them into the studio and do the editing, do the mix mastering then, you know. Um, yeah. I'm not, uh, I love recording studios. I love all that. I love to get creative there. But when I'm doing my solo work, I just need to be left alone. You know, yeah. leave me alone, you know. Uh, so I'll be doing that. And uh, I'm doing a lot of vocal stuff now, like overtone singing, and I'm... Um, also, you know, I'm creating, I'm kind of getting more into uh, organic uh, body percussive stuff. So my ultimate goal, maybe within the next couple of years, is to create a solo piece of music which doesn't even have the guitar involved. You know, cool. it's basically your own African singing, 
uh, mouth percussion, you know, chest percussion and, um, you know, hand flute stuff. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I've got a plan. I've got a plan, but it's work. It is work. And my yeah. my mantra or, you know, is always do the work. You know, yeah. Because you're not going to achieve anything without the work. Nothing comes easy to me. Nothing does. Yeah. But if I put in the work and I'm talking a lot of work, a lot of work, you know, um, it shows, you know, you get to a level where you kind of get confident with it. And then you're like, you know what? Yeah, and the more you do it, the more you experiment, the more you know, the more new ideas start to come in, you know. So the universe will reward you with its gifts, you know, if you put enough yeah. um, you know, treasures into it and and you know, just just kind of, you know, fill it up with fill yourself up with as much knowledge as you can of whatever your art is and you know, then then just start yeah, performing it. So that's that that's what's planned, but the C D is coming. The, the yeah. CD is coming for sure now, you know. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, uh, when it is, the CD will be released with the uh, website. So we're just yeah. going to do the thing out, and it'll only be a website. I don't want to engage uh, on a personal level, but there will be a plat- there will be a section on the website where they can get in touch with me. But at least yeah. I've got control of it. Over. Yeah, it. yeah. Uh, but it'll it'll just be old school website. It used to work before, you know. Uh, all my favorite artists all. You know, all the great artists, they're, they're not on any social media. Yeah, yeah but for They sure. are at a different level than I am. But I really haven't got time, Dane. I have not got yeah. time. My head's well, just fried, you know? And as you say, you got a lot of work to do. And the, and the other thing that struck me when you were saying that as well is, is um, nobody else can do the work for you as well. So... You know, yeah, if it frees exactly. you up to, to spend more time working on, working on the CD and working on your next set of music, then happy days. Yeah, and also the one thing I did notice when I did cut off uh, social media, uh, my music, uh, my approach to my music has changed now because my headspace is so much more clearer. Mm. Now. And I'm actually writing stuff that where I'm actually listening, whereas before, you know, you know, you kind of go on social media and you see guitar players and you are visually influenced. You know, I'm like, mm. oh, that's cool. And look what he's doing there. And I don't see any of that. I do go on YouTube. Yeah. Or but there's nothing influencing my writing now, just, just my head. So my headspace can think a lot more it's decluttered you know there's yeah. no more information being fed into me the only information is the one that i'm trying to sort out in my head so there's no new stuff coming in here left right and center that's kind of creating chaos upstairs so it's at a peaceful place now where i can actually think and kind of you know see my you know see myself in the woods you know through the woods just to kind of yeah. get a peace. yeah but uh oh but it's all good it's the way of the world you know i mean i'm 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 getting old now, you know, so, you know, I'll just stay in the same old me, really. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Big thank you to Amrit Son for joining me. You're listening to the Arch on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dan Cobain, and this is Dan Pride with Afraid. I'm afraid that one day I will die I'm afraid I'll find out That my whole life has been a lie The ramblings of a mental patient Or just some simulation From the future And there's nothing I can do Is any of this true? I'm afraid when I look up at the night I look at all the stars and realise They're not just a pretty sight They're bigger than I can imagine With surroundings that I can't fathom at all And there's nothing I can do Is any of this true? I just want to know Should I stick around or go? Begin again Holding nothing back Would I even start On my feet with this guitar I don't know how I would do it 
all again And I'm afraid when I think about the earth All the avoidable suffering All the unnecessary hurts You see it all on the internet And people go on about stuff that they don't get And they go on, and they go on, and they go on I just wanna know Should I stick around or go? Begin again Holding nothing back But would I even start On my feet with this guitar? I don't know if I could Do it all again I'm afraid when I think about this country All the less fortunate people What they could have been If we went around by the Tories Oh but that's a different story For another day Another day Another day Another day I'm afraid when I think about me Just the future really Cause I'm not sure what I am meant to be Never giving up on music But the doubts come in too quick And they say I don't know what to do They say I don't know what to do You're listening to The Archer on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and it's time for us to head over to the Oak Shed now to catch up with Twanglin' Jack Ford for this week's album review. Fats Domino, 16 Greatest Hits. This is a good condition 12-inch vinyl on Liberty Records that I picked up for £2 at the British Heart Foundation charity shop. It kicks off with one of the songs that has been claimed as the start of rock and roll, The Fat Man, recorded in 1948. Antonine Domino was very much from New Orleans. I remember a reporter commenting on Hurricane Katrina and assuring the world that Fat Domino was okay. His piano playing had that New Orleans roll that distinguished it from the other rock and roll pioneers. There is a piano trick that in my mind I call doing a fat domino. It is when the bass is playing fours but the right hand is playing triplets. It is a great way to lift a piano accompaniment. When you know it, you will hear it everywhere. This album has the indisputable classic Blueberry Hill and other songs that instantly bring a grin to the most stubborn of frowns. Walking. Ain't that a shame, I'm walking to New Orleans. I was pleased to find the dominoed version of My Blue Heaven. Not only is he a pioneer of rock and roll, but it can also be argued that he is the inspiration for ska music. Some of these recordings have that ska offbeat that was picked up by the Jamaican musicians. Fats Domino, 16 Greatest Hits. Big thank you to Twangler Jack Ford for this week's album review. Thank you to Amrit Son for being this week's guest. 
Thank you to everyone whose music I've shared. As always, you can reach out to me here at the studio by dropping me an email on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk. That's D-A-N-E dot C-O-B-A-I-N at wickhamsound.org.uk. And I'm particularly keen to hear from poets, performers, musicians, people with MP3s, arts, news. Don't hesitate to get in touch. You can also find us on Facebook. If you search for The Art Show on Wickham Sound, you should be able to find us. And we are repeat on Wickham Sound on Monday nights. We're on the Wickham Sound Listen Again, iTunes, Spotify, and wherever else you get your podcasts. So I'm going to leave you with one last tune, and this is Caitlin McAvoy with Loving Me. I'll see you next week. Who you can draw